What's going on there, folks? Good afternoon, good evening to some out there. It's the Earth Master here on the Sunday, September 11th, 11th, 2022. It is about 3.13 p.m. West Coast time here in California. Latest quake on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a, uh, looks like a 2.5 earthquake, 2.6, uh, 2.5 out there in California. Southern California region, uh, latest quake out there on the globe. Notice here, over the last 24 hours, uh, definitely seen a broad scale movement of earthquake activity, including some deeper back building quakes here along the Fiji Islands area and the Tonga Trench. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here from the USGS map uh, showing that movement here over the last 24 hours. There's all that activity that really ramped up yesterday around the northern end of the Java Trench. We've seen quite a bit of uh, fives, fours, and even a six-pointer over there yesterday. Uh, and then right around, well, this some of this activity is from this morning, but uh, yesterday they had a, a pretty good ramping up of quakes as well. Uh, and then, of course, we had that uh, large earthquake, the 7.6 strike yesterday. Since then, what's happened? Well, we've seen some aftershock activity and continual movement here within the region, including some earthquake activity uh, continuing to strain up in between these two points that we uh, uh, observed yesterday. Uh, of course, is a pretty powerful quake there. And when we see two separate areas of intense warming, can't help but wonder about what's going to happen here in between. Uh, we have seen a little bit of increase in pressure and some further earthquake activity up here into the uh, New Guinea area with quite a few fours kicking up here this morning and overnight since the 7.6 struck here yesterday. So got to keep a close eye in between these two points of pressure, two points of large earthquakes. There's a lot at play here in terms of the plate tectonics and dynamics at work here in the region. Watch this area pretty closely. Also, we are getting some further um, movement back building here into the Tonga Trench. Uh, some of it was from yesterday, but we did have a couple earthquakes here this morning, a 4.5. Pretty deep, though. Look at this. Look where this earthquake struck. Way up north here. Uh, most of the time when we talk about deep earthquakes, we're looking at in this little horseshoe-type uh, bend here along the Tonga Trench, Kermadec Trench. But this earthquake struck way out here, uh, just northeast of the Vanuatu area at 615 kilometers deep. Now... I don't recall the last time we've seen any uh, major deep activity out there like that, but looking at the historical map shows that uh, it does happen right there where the star is, is our latest deep quake here outside of Vanuatu on the map. Uh, but uh, historical data, at least since about 1900 or so, shows uh, some periods of some deeper movement earthquakes out there in that area. So uh, it does happen. I just It's been a while since I've seen this type of deep movement up there most of the time again situated within this area so a lot going on here around the southwestern portion of the pacific plate and the java trench areas indonesia watching that pretty closely so we have seen a little bit of adjustment within the last hour up north uh, around the japan area with a 5.0 this one pretty deep as well 166 kilometers and of course there is quite a bit of strain up here along this area of the japan trench and the kuro kamachaka trench over the last uh, few months or so, we have seen some fives and uh, I believe a couple sixes here along the Japan Trench, but not so much up here along the Kuro Kamachaka Trench. So, and this area does see a pretty large amount of uh, uh, accumulated slip rate here. It's a subduction zone, and uh, it's just it's been a while. Something's definitely building up here uh, for the next mega quake, I believe. When it's going to happen, I, I don't know. All I know is uh, it's been awfully quiet. Today, though, 5.0 in the deeper regions of Japan into the Japan Trench. So things kind of uh, looking, uh, aside from that, quiet up here. But keep an eye on that region. West Coast activity lighten up as well. Looks like California got uh, a couple small earthquakes here over the last 24 hours. This is a 2.5 and above map. Latest quakes there near Pinnacles along the San Andreas Fault. And over here around Mammoth Lakes, Long Valley Super Volcano, a 2.9. Let's bring up the all magnitudes here and see what we got. Uh, adds a few more. Uh, of course, uh, this area along the plate boundary, the San Andreas Fault, is the creeping section, meaning that uh, it, it tends to creep, creep.
creep along. We get these creeping earthquakes. Sounds kind of weird, but uh, uh, we get these cr uh, quakes that do creep along here on this plate boundary of uh, this section, and uh, that's very normal. Sometimes we can see fives and uh, whatnot, a little bit higher, but these uh, twos and threes that have been kicking off here in this area, somewhat normal for uh, for this area. Now over here along the Long Valley Super Volcano, things kind of lighten up here within the last hour, uh, including a couple twos and some ones, so uh, see if that turns into a little swarm or not. Sometimes they do uh, kick up pretty uh, drastically. Uh, Ridgecrest area down here, pretty quiet, only a couple handful, a little handful of earthquakes there. Looks like uh, this morning time frame mostly couple ones in there. Uh, extreme far Southern California, not a whole lot going on. Nothing in the red today, or at least right now. Did have a, a couple small microquakes throughout the area of the San Jacinto Fault Zone and around Borrego Springs. No major adjustment or movement to note here at the Salton Sea, although two, what have we got? Two earthquakes down here off the Brawley Seismic Zone. Very small quakes. But it is getting a little close there to the San Andreas Fault, the southern segment of that uh, plate boundary. Watch that area as well. Nothing going on in the Pacific Northwest. They must have turned off uh, their reporting system because there's not even been a, a mouse squeak up there. And I know there's microquakes all throughout the region. They're just not showing up there on the map. Some movement out around the beautiful state of Kansas and Oklahoma today. Uh, New Madrid zone. Looks like Arkansas has seen an earthquake here uh, this morning around the uh, New Madrid seismic zone, a 2.2. Eastern portion of the country looks pretty clear. Uh, Puerto Rico and around the rest of the Caribbean plate, things have kind of backed off from last night. We did see things kind of ramp up here in the uh, area of Puerto Rico and also down here near the uh, De uh, Dominica area. But uh, things... For the most part, look like they're kind of mellowing out there in that region. Same for the South America region here. This is from yesterday's time frame. No new earthquake activity to report down there. Uh, much further over here into the east or the west, depending on how you want to look at it. 4.1 in Romania. That one's pretty deep at 145 kilometers and also 4.0 in Iran. But uh, I think the big story right now, there's still quite a, quite a bit of pressure here in this area, folks. Let me pull up 4.5 and above last seven days. Uh, could give us an indicator of where we could expect to see some release of pressure. Uh, something that maybe hasn't popped up here recently. Uh, it's got that middle point here in between the northern end of the Java Trench all the way to where we're seeing these uh, uh, the 7.6 and also a little separate swarming here. I still think there's potential to see some larger quake activity within this region considering uh, the amount of activity we've seen throughout the area, even following the large earthquake activity yesterday. So watch these two areas, uh, these two little uh, points here. You can pretty much draw a little X here on the map, uh, two X's. But also at the same time, got to remember the adjustment that's taken place here uh, with the general plate movement within this area. Um, we got to be doing something up here to the uh, Japan and the Kuro Kamchaka Trench. Definitely has to be building up there. Uh, so we'll see what continues following that 5.0, the deeper quake there in the Japan region. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. Let's see what we got there. I do like to check this just on occasion, see what we got. There's a signature there from a 7.6 and uh, uh, some other earthquake activity in the Java Trench. The uh, six-pointer and the fives that kicked off there yesterday. That is not localized activity. That is not magma movement. I don't care what anyone says on the YouTube uh, world. That's the seismograph signature from large earthquakes. And they show up across the globe. Seismic waves travel around the globe sometimes, uh, uh, multiple times, if they get uh, some big enough seismic uh, earthquakes. So recent activity i'm not noticing a whole lot there is a data blackout looks like right now not a whole lot of data showing up on certain uh yellowstone stations but uh we can get a general idea of what's going on just looking at uh, this this station here there's not a whole lot uh, maybe some very very small microquake activity but things are very uh quiet there at yellowstone right now very very quiet uh and same with the uh down in the American Samoa Tau uh, volcano. 
let's go ahead and check this out here real quick and see what we got for the uh, current data down there. I believe things are backing off as far as the amount of earthquake activity goes. There's been no major changes except for that uh, activity that's just kind of mellowing out. Looking at the latest seismograph station, check out those waves right there from the, uh, the S waves from the 7.6 yesterday and the uh, six pointer in the Java Trench area. Just like Yellowstone, but showing up a little bit differently on this graph, but still got the same S wave type readings couple localized earthquakes here on the map on the graph but that's about it things uh, are kind of mellowing out not a whole lot of uh, uptick in earthquake activity around the Tau volcano American Samoa area uh, let's see what do we got for Hawaii out there I know I skipped over that I do want to check out here and it doesn't look like things are super active today and we're talking about only eight earthquakes on the map that's not that big of a deal that's pretty quiet for the big island so not a whole lot going on out there currently uh let's see that's about it for the worldwide activity we do have a old friend returning on the solar disc gonna be rotating in the view here into earth view pretty soon do you guys remember sunspot 3088 that is the bad boy I, I called it the bad boy because it was sparking off all sorts of m flares uh, a couple weeks ago it's returning around the southeastern limb and um, let me see here it's gonna be this one I believe is a little old right no 911 22 so that is uh, this one looks pretty recent here hold on a second yeah this is a recent one so not these two right here but uh, this other one that you can kind of see back over here is not quite visible. It's still, it is still very active if you look at it. It's still got some beautiful prominence features here uh, with those loops. And uh, it's been active. And I think this uh, old sunspot, it'll probably be renamed here, will uh, give us some uh, activity uptick here in the coming days once that does rotate in the view. The, this here is a newly... Uh, developing sunspot and a named sunspot over here that's listed up on the uh, on the charts here 3100 and here's a newer one but you would have to look way over here you can't really see it yet you can't even see 3088 our old buddy off there on the southeastern limb will be rotating into view here in the coming days we'll see what uh, it wants to spark up uh, right now it looks like these guys are forecasting a 95 percent chance of a C flare uh, 20 percent chance for an m flare x flare remains at one percent and um no major coronal holes that are facing us we do have 20 uh, what is this 23 that uh, will be rotating here in the view shortly or at least at least earth directed view shortly uh, and could provide us with some uh, enhancements here on the three-day geomagnetic unrest forecast uh, these guys put out a little article in regards to this too. I kind of got a laugh out of it this morning. Uh, our old friend, large and active sunspot region 3088 is now located just behind the southeastern limb and will begin turning back into view during the next few days. The chances of noteworthy solar flares could increase this week depending on what remains of the sunspot group. But to me, it looks, <laughs> looks pretty active right there. Look at that. We'll wait for that uh, to return there good old buddy 3088 <laughs> all right uh, what else we got here folks current space weather conditions here pretty minimal density has dropped off completely of course we don't have any major uh, uh, solar activity headed our way the speed is uh, down around the 450 uh, range everything looks somewhat stable there with the interplanetary magnetic field index and uh, temp looks to be pretty on the neutral or looks on the neutral side right now but uh, again, this is all subject to change here with the uh, incoming sunspot regions. We'll definitely wait for that and uh, see what happens. Uh, let's see what we got for fire activity here in California. Everything's just burning up. Got smoky skies out here where I live today from all the fires. I mean, it uh, it's 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 bad. Uh, the mosquito fire up there above Sacramento up into the Sierra Nevada 
sits at uh, about 41,000 acres, 10% contained. Uh, so they're getting a little bit of containment on there. I think there's a chance of uh, some storms, thunderstorms up here in the mountains today from the remnants and moisture from the uh, tropical storm, tropical depression K that uh, hit Southern California. Um, so a little bit of moisture bringing up here possibly could uh, put a damper on these fires, but also with lightning, uh, it could spark up a couple more fires. So that's, I mean, that's all we need, right? That would not be good. Um, what do we got up here in the valley? Looks like a five fire. I haven't even heard of that. Looks like uh, a little vegetation fire at the red, just outside the Red Bluff plant. But, uh, yep, it is uh, it's definitely dry out here, folks. Uh, we'll take any rainfall we can get. I know we have... Uh, stand by for a second here. We have uh, some much cooler conditions right now here around the Chico area. We're sitting at uh, 94 degrees outside here where I live. Uh, it's a lot better than 115 degrees, and that's pretty much what we've seen here. Uh, over the last 10 days or so so I'm, I'm enjoying this cooler weather if you want to call it cooler uh, we are looking at some uh, a couple different systems here got a low pressure system spinning up here and there is a uh, tropical depression K spinning off the coast uh, we are we are definitely getting some uh, much cooler conditions here along the west coast uh, with some ridging some high pressure ridging going to be building for you folks in Oklahoma and uh, states out in the southern plains Let's see here that low pressure system kind of dissipates but overall we're looking at some much cooler temperatures here along the west coast and a look at the heat going to be building up here into oklahoma uh, from that southwest the south flow from the gulf definitely going to be warm for you guys out there in the uh, coming days uh, while the west coast here kind of cools down a little bit so i will definitely take a little bit of the cooler temperatures all right guys i'm going to jump off here hope everyone enjoys their sunday and uh, we'll be back here a little bit later with a uh, a nightly update here for our sunday night and again uh, coming up this week uh, not for sure what day we're going to do it uh, might make it on a thursday we're going to do our drawing for our members channel members here um, monthly drawing I think we got about 31 entries right now so the odds of uh, winning a prize for the members are uh, actually quite high we've got a 1 in 31 chance right pretty good deal I think uh, this month here for September we're giving away some Earthmaster merchandise free of charge free shipping nothing go nothing charged to you uh, and that will be your choice if you want a shirt, if you want a sweater, if you want... Haven't got hats on there yet. But the shirts are cool. Um, I'm thinking about adding some new designs on there uh, for the Earthmaster merchandise. But uh, yeah, to be your choice. Uh, we got coffee mugs, we got uh, face masks, got uh, all sorts of cool stuff there. And um, that'll be your choice, of course, whatever you want to... Uh, pick we'll give you an option a couple options there and uh, again probably on Thursday we'll do that live drawing for the members and if you want to get a chance to join in jump on board um, I think it's a pretty good deal uh, get some uh, extra videos extra perks here extra icons emojis and whatnot and we're all still just kind of it's still a fairly new program um, that I jumped on here with YouTube and uh, just kind of adding some things onto it once in a while. And uh, as time goes on, we'll add more uh, more features and more perks onto the uh, members' benefits. So, yeah. All right, guys. Have a good day. It looks like a couple of the uh, plate boundary stations there, Petrolia, and a couple other stations are offline. Maybe it looks like it's just Petrolia. But uh, we'll keep an eye on it. And, uh, oh, Yellowstone's down as well. So we'll keep an eye on it. If they don't come back here shortly, we'll see if we can't do a reset on that and uh, get it going. All right, guys, have a good day. Stay safe. We'll chat you guys uh, very soon. Peace out.